Hostos cometh MC, most successful player on the face of the planet. Uh, he'll be playing in our league later this week, but of course we've got to get into a live versus Mara. If we had to make a prediction, Kev, uh, who, who would you go with? Um, I'm not sure if this comes to you as a surprise or not, but I'm actually going to think that I actually thought I had to make the predictions before the show, and I actually think that Moro is going to take it today. Moro is in 0-2 right now, Ben, in the NASL Season 4, and that's very uncharacteristic for Moro, as Moro normally always performs well at the NASL. I believe Season 1 he made it to the offline finals, or at least to the playoffs, but I believe he was offline finals. Season 2 he definitely made it to the offline finals, uh, where he even took out Mana back then, 3-0 in the first round, the great series, and then went on to lose against Thorsen. And in Season 3, he almost made it uh, to the Overland Finals. He just lost in the playoffs against uh, Beastie Cutie, or Wild Card matches, I should say, but that's basically the first round of the playoffs. But in general, Ben, we both know that Moro is a player who really prepares for his NESL games, does research on his opponents. So seeing him 0-2 feels weird. Seeing him 0-3 is something I can't imagine. Then again, seeing a live 0-3, as a live currently holds an 0-2 record in the league as well, seems odd too. Long answer to a short question. I still think Moro is going to take it. Yeah, so it's a little bit tougher to call for me, Kevin. I think uh, I do think Moro is a great foreign Zerg player, but I also know he's been playing quite a bit of Heart of the Swarm. Yes, a lot and of Heart of the Swarm. That does worry me some. Uh, that having been said, I, I'm also going to go with Moro if for no other reason than I'm down 0-2. I can't let you get any further ahead of me today. <laughs> But also Moro, um, I mean, Alive is 0-2 in this season as well. If you guys wonder how did that happen, Alive lost against Dong Rei Gu in the first week, 2-1. to Of course, there's absolutely no shame in that. Uh, last week, he lost uh, perhaps rather surprisingly. Wow, this is so smart. Did Alive not see that comment? Oh my god, Moro. How cool is this, Ben? He just sends out two SCVs, pretending there are Rexes going out. Look how crit. Wow, this is, I mean, by Alive. This is so smart by Alive. And actually, he's sending the SCVs back around. This is the sickest mind game. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Oh my damn. Uh, damn. Alive just doing a little bit of, uh, like you said, mind tricks nah, here. This just is messing really with sick. A bit. In fact, Alive's opening is going to be Command Center first. Morrow now <laughs> should be aware of it. Wow, well, this is so smart. Have you ever seen that, Ben? No, I, I really haven't. But, I mean, we ha we've seen things like it with players sometimes putting down fake pylons saying, hey, I'm going to cannon rush you, yeah. better pull drones. I mean, things like that happen from time to time. Uh, but uh, it's, it's pretty seldom, and it's always cool to see a player do something mm. cute like that and have it actually work. The good thing for Moro is, of course, the moment that those drones are idling over here, by the time that this hatchery finishes, they can immediately go back to mining. But still, Alive bought quite a bit of time for himself there, and obviously confused Moro a hell of a lot. Uh, Moro is right now going to find his uh, barracks. And he's wondering, like, oh, what's going on, what's going on? Hmm, the timing on that orbital was a little bit off. Come on, Moro. Yeah, he, he knows what's up yeah. uh, at this point, just by seeing everything else. Factory now down. Yeah, we'll spot uh, the timing. Even well. if he doesn't know exactly where the command center is, Moral's a good enough player that he knows there's a command center somewhere. Uh, Hellion follow-up for Alive. Um, might even be some elevator plays. We do see that reactor going up. Could be either of the two. Uh, I, I like this, uh, certainly. As, But, I mean, the thing that Terran players have, have been struggling with in Wings of Liberty these days, Kevin, is just how in the world do I harass a Zerg at this point in the development of the metagame? Yeah, uh, that is a problem for many people out there. <laughs> Not just for Terrence, man. For Protoss plays as well. Heart of the Swarm is going to be a lot easier. Man, it's so nice to harass with Protoss in Heart of the Swarm. You have no idea how much fun it is. You enjoying Recall? Yes, I've been using it uh, more and more. You know, uh, before the action really kicks in, we of course have a little bit of time to talk about Heart of the Swarm, as today has been a day that uh, root guys have been arriving in Southern California as well. If you guys wonder right now, what are the root guys doing over here? We got Major Vibe, TT1, and Cats all coming over to play in a $4,000 Heart of the Swarm uh, NESL tournament, which is going to be super awesome. We're going to host that tournament Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, everybody can watch. Sunday, only the subscribers can watch. Uh, ben, I'm super excited about that. And what I want to say is, you know, whenever you play Heart of the Swarm, and I've played a lot, just yesterday I played like 20 games Heart of the Swarm myself, there are still these moments when I was like, oh, I'm taking a bad fight, oh, okay, I'm trying to micro, oh, this fight sucks, and then by the time I have three units left, I was like, oh my god, I could have recalled. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it's just not really in my system yet, you know, it's one of those things that you really have to just hammer in and never forget about, but... I just still forget about it sometimes. You know, I'm, I'm finding the same thing when I play. I'll, I'll forget to use the new units, uh, which is <laughs> a real shame because yeah. the new units are so good and so fun. 
Ben is like six pulling everybody. <laughs> oh, I accidentally forgot to build the Viper. <laughs> I mean, I played a Heart of the Swarm game right before we went live, and it was against a mecking Terran, and I went like Roachling with Infe with uh, with Drop, and uh, and then at like the end of the game, I was like, oh, I could have made some Vipers, and that would have been really good against all these tanks. But uh, at the end of the day, it didn't matter because Brood Lord's still OP. See three uh, Rexes going up. Double reactor over here, so our life is going to be able to produce a ton of uh, Marines. He has quite a few Hellions on the map just controlling. He's not going to sacrifice those Hellions yet. Mora has been doing an excellent job, by the way, running up as uh, hard as he can. has 12 spare larvae right now. But I think he wants to make sure mm, that he, he can actually... He wants to confirm what he's up against yep. before he commits that larva to anything. And uh, In fact, he is going to make at least a handful yeah. of Zerglings here because... Uh, he's uh, he's not completely confident about his ability to defend no. this Hellion Harass. And uh, he might be worried that the starport was a little bit quicker, that uh, a medevac would be up, and in case those Hellions would be dropped in the main base, he would be in a lot of trouble if those were all drones. So getting a couple of links right now makes perfect sense for Moro. Stefan. Funny story kind of related to Heart of the Swarm, Kevin. I played a Wings of Liberty game last week uh, that started off a lot like this. And uh, I just... You know, in Heart of the Swarm, everybody's playing really passive because they want to get those new units out. Mm -hmm. uh, in this particular Wings of Liberty game, a, a Terran player made that same kind of poke with Hellions, but also with about eight Marines, and it just killed me. Because I was like, what do I do? <laughs> oh, crap. I just I didn't I didn't remember to make units because I was I was in Heart of the Swarm mode. <laughs> you were like, uh, Swarm host. <laughs> Viper, let I don't me know how to deal with these three Hellions yeah. and these eight mm -hmm. Marines. Oh, my God. It was really sad. I was, mm -hmm. I was pretty mad after that game. I was pretty mad yesterday as well, a few times. Overseer is morphing over here for Moro. Moro is completely unaware, but of all these Marines making their way across the map, Stim is already two medevacs are out as well. I believe even three. No, uh, mistaken. It's only two medevacs right now. This is pretty scary, but Moro is going to need a lot more units than he currently has. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's uh, enough of a force that he has to muster something. He's got some links popping out, but really, he's going to have to pull the queens uh. down. He's got to get some spine crawlers in position, but he just doesn't have it. This is a really God. scary push for Moro. It's a bit yeah. of an anti-timing. This looks terrible for Moro. Moro just doesn't have the units to deal with all these team marines right now. It's a really sick timing by our life. Moro is losing a lot of drones. He's going to bring in his circling oh, right now, but it's a terrible position. The station is also in a very awkward position, and Moro just GG's. <laughs> Alive with the weird timing. Now I don't feel as bad about losing that game because that's basically well. the same push that killed me. I mean, uh, weird uh, to some degree, yes, but Moro is just playing incredibly mm, greedy in this game. It made one real critical mistake, and it's that he didn't have a Bailing Nest. Mm. Uh, and in this sort of era of, hey, I'm going to do a little bit of harass with Hellion Marine, yes, it's possible to hold it with just Zerglings if you get a good surround. Cloud Kingdom is not a map that really plays well to the I'm going to surround your army game. There's a lot of narrow chokes around the place, and uh, it's these situations where Banelings really, really shine. Do you think if Mora wouldn't have lost so much mining time early on, do you think that would have made mm, a difference? I, I don't. I don't. I think that was a classic case of him just misinterpreting what he was playing against mm. and not quite reacting to it perfectly. Uh, Kevin, before we jump on, move on to our next game, I do, I do want to take just a moment to tip my hat to the maker of Cloud Kingdom, Super Super Uman or mm -hmm. Super Oman, O U Man. I don't really know how to say his name, uh, but a very talented map maker who's been making mm -hmm. maps since the Brood War days. Uh, recently retired from mapping, uh, he was the maker of Cloud Kingdom. He was the maker of many successful Brood War maps. Test Buck as well. Yes, you're right. Uh, also the maker of Test Bug, a map that was run on the MLG circuit for some time. Uh, so just want to sort of say goodbye to him and thank him for all of his awesome contributions. Yeah. To the he community. wrote a really awesome blog at Team Liquid. I think you guys should definitely check it out if you have some spare time and read it. I thought it was a really uh, cool story because it kind of gives you a look like how we could, well, like we strive, we have our own goals, you know, we want to become better at casting or still at playing, and we worked out with those goals, and it's really interesting to see things out of someone else's uh, position who's so eager in making a really good yeah. map and feels that basically for him winning a tournament is seeing his tournament or seeing his map being used in a tournament. And I never really thought about it like that, but I thought it was a really, uh, yeah, there's really there's amazing story. There's an entire story. community built around mapping. And uh, to be completely honest, I would love to see more community support for those mappers because they do great things. And great maps do lead to great games of StarCraft, and, and that's how you grow the scene, by, by showing people great games. Uh, that last game brought to you guys mm -hmm. by Twitch TV as we are going to go ahead and jump into our next short break. There was another thing I wanted to say, but I have no idea what it was now. So I'm just going to say stick around. Game two when we get back. 